In this tutorial, we'll be going over the Z-Test command, which you can read about on the Shader Lab page called Culling and Depth Testing. It's just a couple of lines. We'll be going over it, but you can read, I suppose. Um, so the default is Z-Test L equal, and that's a combination of Z-Test less and Z-Test equal. We'll go over that in a moment. First, I'll show you what we have in the scene. So we have a standard Unity plane, that's a cyan color, and a standard Unity sphere, and that's currently a red color. The cyan plane is using, from Tutorial 2, properties, just a shader that writes a solid color to the screen that we define. And the shader for the sphere looks a bit more complicated but everything currently is going to be commented out, so it will be the exact same shader except for a different color. So they're both using Z-Test L equal right now, I'm writing solid colors, which means that we're going to see the pixels of the mesh that is closer to the camera. So if we had a situation, say, here, where we saw the sum of the sphere and some of the plane, that's because the plane's pixels in this area are closer to the camera than those of the sphere. So I mentioned that Z-Test L equal is a mix of Z-Test less and Z-Test equal. So let's go ahead and change it, change it so that the sphere is now going to be using Z-Test less. And you see no change. In theory, I guess there could be a one pixel error where Z test less and L equal um, would have, this would have like one pixel less in certain areas be rendering, but I've never seen that actually be the case. Um, I've, I will show you why I think that Z test L equal is the default instead of Z test less, and it doesn't have to do with any sort of difference in rendering when you're just using one pass in this way. So we'll put in a second pass, and first we'll say Z test less, and this is going to be using the gray color. So this will be written first, and then we'll write with gray and overwrite that. But we don't see any change. And that is because the color gray, as we defined here, is depth testing. And it's only going to be written where its pixel, the pixels of the mesh are closer than what's already been written. And considering it's the same mesh, then it's not going to be less. It's going to be exactly the same. So then in that case, we're going to need Z-Test equal. And now, it's going to match up with what's already been rendered, where it can be rendered, where, this, where the plane is not, with the, met with the red pixels, and so it completely overwrites them. So you probably wouldn't want to do that, that's just a waste of a pass, but we can use blending. Now, you know, you'd want something more complicated in general, but we can just blend. Um, this is taking the color gray and then multiplying that into the color that's already there, red, and then adding that to nothing. So just multiplication of the two passes and nothing else. So if we were to comment out Z-Test equal and Z-Test less, meaning we have Z-Test L equal in both cases, then we will get the same result. So again, the red uses less and the gray uses equal. They're both actually, you know, they're both using L equal but they only effectively use those portions of the test. So let's comment out the second pass again, and we'll look at another option, which is uh, Z test greater. There's greater and G equal for greater than or equal to. We'll use this on the red pass of the sphere. Z test greater, and go back in. And then we'll move the camera, and we're not seeing anything. And that, we'll sh see why that is in a moment. We'll say tags Q equals geometry plus one. And now, we will be able to see the sphere. This is, the plane is rendering first, and then we're seeing the sphere where it is farther away in the depth buffer than what's already there. So, we still have pixels that could be rendered here and there, but they're not. And they won't be rendered if we look on the other side either. So you can't see something that has a z-test greater or g equal if it is not farther away than an already rendered mesh. And the default value that first comes in at the beginning of every, um, every frame 
for the depth buffer is at the far clip plane, or essentially infinite as infinitely far away as it can be. So when it, the sphere tests against that, where we just have the background, then it's going to fail, and it's not going to be rendered at all. So one thing we can do is make a combination of a shader that uses Z-test greater than or equal to and Z-test less and take off blending. So now we go back in. We have gray pixels that are rendering using the Z-test less and red pixels where it's using Z-test greater than or equal, which would be the same as Z-test greater there you go now if we have Z we'll take this off and we'll use Z test L equal to begin with and we'll use Z test greater in the second pass and we'll flip the colors around but if we were to use G equal here this is Z test L equal L equal with everything commented out G equal here and then we'll overwrite all of those pixels. So just be aware that if you're going to be using a shader that renders differently if it's in front of or behind an object, that you can't use a form of equal in the second pass if you don't want everything to be overwritten. So here is a case where we have Z test L equal, Z test G equal, and if you use Z test Z test L equal or Z test less, it makes no difference. It doesn't matter if there's equal in the first part of the shader, the first uh, pass of the of the shader. But in the second case, we have to have Z test greater to see that effect properly. And if we were to have Z test greater in the first case, we commented out the Z test in the second one. This is now going to be Z test greater for red, Z test L equal for gray. And that overwrites things too, so we need to use there Z test less. So those are the two forms of um, you know matching greater with less and having equal in the second pass. And then if we just use Z test equal, we won't have we will still have everything overwritten, but only where it was rendered from the first pass. So using Z test greater and overwriting there, and nothing in the front. Now we'll look at the final couple of cases, the first being Z-test always. So now we're going to say, render the pixels of this mesh, whether they are behind or in front of something. So here's the sphere in front, and here's the sphere behind, and we see it not working. And that is because the sphere obviously is rendering first, then the plane is rendering second and covering it up, even though we said depth test uh, using Z-test always on the sphere. So that depth test will show up working correctly if we push it into a later queue than the plane. So here we have geometry plus one, and we're going to see it show up even though it's farther away from the camera. And Z-test always could be used, say, in a 2D game where you were going to do all of your uh, layering using render queues. So we could even say Z-test always, Z Z right off, and in theory, maybe your shader could run faster because you're not bothering to write to the depth buffer, you're not performing a depth check, but I've tested this, at least on the iPhone, and I never found that to have any performance benefit. So if you ever find a case where that is true, and doing something like that would help out, let me know, um, but I'd say just use these when you actually need to, and not because of some... Um, potential performance benefit that you may not actually see. And then that's Z-test always, and there's also Z-test not equal. And not equal could get weird in a multi-pass shader, but in general, that's going to give you the same results as Z-test always, because it's very difficult. I've, I've never been able to get Z-test equal to render meshes in the same place unless they were actually in the same subshader.